Welcome, you're watching the NWR Mining Resources series. On the line we have Andromeda Metals. Andromeda Metals is a fast-growing South Australian company with a vision to supply the world with superior quality industrial minerals. On the line with us today we have James Marsh who is Andromeda Metals Managing Director. If you have any questions throughout James's presentation please feel free to drop them in the chat function. Over to you James. Yeah thanks for the introduction and hello everyone welcome to Andromeda. Uh, as you heard there, we are an emerging industrial minerals producer, um, but we also have a number of other value chains, which makes us more interesting than the average industrial minerals player. Um, sorry, my slide. <laughs> slight hand hiccup with my slide here, sorry. Um, next slide is, here we have a corporate overview. So. Uh, at the moment, we are market cap sitting around about uh, 360 million. Um, we've got a lot of money in the bank and no debt. So a very strong position there. Um, you can see the board member makeup. We have a, a board now of very experienced individuals um, who have been selected, especially for uh, our company structure and our aims and goals. Chairman Rod Grievous, uh, he's a geologist, has been MD of SX listed companies. Uh, myself, um, I've got 32 years of experience in the Canadian industry, worked for two of the biggest industrial minerals companies in the world. Joe Ranford, operations director, a uh, very experienced mining, um, op a mining engineer who's dealt with uh, a number of companies in South Australia. Um, and importantly, he's been involved in approval process for mines in South Australia. Uh, Andrew Shearer, another geologist uh, who's a resource analyst. Uh, and we recently added uh, Melissa Holzberger to our board. Uh, and she's a very experienced lawyer who specialized in mining companies, uh, including uh, BHP and Rio Tinto. So a very useful addition to us as we grow. Um, there's a graph there to show our share price um, over the last uh, year or so. Uh, we are following a, a typical curve for uh, a mining company that's going, uh, has a mining project going to operation. So there's been a bit of a dip recently, but that's not unusual for a pre-operational pre phase for a mining company. So our core assets, um, we are focused uh, on our Kaelin and Haloisite Kaelin project, which is, uh, consists of a Great White project, which is a joint venture with Minotaur Exploration, uh, currently sitting at 75% uh, Andromeda. We also have two other Kaelin projects and Haloisite Kaelin projects in South Australia, uh, which are both 100% owned, and that's Mount Hope and Air Kaelin. Uh, in total there, we have um, uh, over well over 100 million tonnes of uh, this Holoisite Kellyn mineral. Um, so a very large jork resource. Um, and if you want to look at the details of that, we've added some slides at the end, which give you all the jork tables for those resources. Um, we also have a joint venture with Minotaur, which is a 50-50 joint venture for natural nanotech. This is a company that's been set up to capture uh, intellectual property from research and development we're doing into nanotechnologies based on the Holoisite Kellyn. So the Great White Project, uh, this is where it sits. It's in South Australia on the Air Peninsula. Um, operations are scheduled to start in 2022, so next year. So it's just around the corner now. Um, we have uh, some legally binding offtakes in place already, which are sufficient to underpin the whole business. So uh, a very large amount financially of legally binding offtakes there. Uh, current demand actually exceeds our initial planned production, which is interesting. So um, we could actually sign up right now for our whole uh, production for the first year, but we, we're making sure we are de-risking this as much as possible uh, and we can use a bit of um, commercial um, pressure uh, to get the best prices and the best deals because our material is, is so highly valued in the market. Um, we're located very close to some essential infrastructure, which is very important for an industrial mineral. We've got a number of ports nearby, uh, which means we can get it to market and still make very good money. We've also got uh, attached to this project uh, in the company, we have a high value, potentially high value concrete industry opportunity, which I'll expand on shortly. We have a de-risk uh, hard purity lumina project we're running, uh, and we have a number of nanotechnology opportunities. So a lot more than just the core business. So just a bit more focused on the binding offtakes, which is a very important subject. So we have two main products we're planning to produce from the mine uh, when we start operations next year. We have a ceramic product, 
um, which is a, a high grade premium product, um, which is going to be targeted for the porcelain industry. So this is a very high end of the porcelain market, or the, sorry, the ceramics market. Uh, this is an area that where global um, supplies are dwindling of this material, um, but it's still growing market. So we signed up initial offtake with a Japanese company um, for a very high price. And this is uh, for $700 a ton, which is very high price for a Kelin. Uh, and that's really because we have the holocyte um, dimension to this product, which adds a lot more value to it. Um, we also have a paint product. So the two main products are ceramics and paint. The paint product, again, is a very high grade, premium grade product for paint. Um, in paint, the, uh, the holocyte angle is not so important, but we need to have very high brightness, very high purity. And we have extreme, we have both those and no problems with that. Uh, and we have an offtake agreement in place there for 70,000 tons a year, um, which is a very large contract uh, for premium grade into China. And um, that price is, is much higher than the $700 a ton. Uh, and there are significant global opportunities for that material. So that's our core business, which underpins the whole thing. Um, also coming through in the background, we have been working on a new product for concrete. We call this a holocyte rheology modifier. Uh, we have filed a patent for this. Um, it's a new product, a new application for this material. No one else has done it before uh, for this particular um, concrete, um, these concrete benefits. So at the moment, what we're seeing is the, some very interesting benefits. And by changing the rheology and optimizing the rheology, uh, it can allow all sorts of interesting uh, optimizations, uh, as in higher strength, reducing the carbon footprint, better handling and better safety. So all very desirable uh, benefits there. Um, now we're seeing these um, repeatable in multiple tests. Uh, we now moved through to the commercial testing phase of this. And we have some very large commercial companies who are interested in this material. Uh, and we are in fact, at the moment, drilling uh, bulk samples uh, of this. So ton amounts of this material are being taken out of the ground to progress those uh, that testing through to commercial agreements. The key for making this product work is it only needs about one kilo in, in three tons of concrete, one cube of concrete. So very low dosage, uh, which means we can get a high price for this material. Um, it won't affect the overall price of concrete much at all, uh, but it gives a whole lot of very interesting and desirable benefits, especially now with the, the big push around the world to reduce carbon footprint. So here we have um, a huge potential global market, uh, but also some very interesting domestic opportunities as well. Uh, and we have passed the concrete standards already for this material has gone through those. So it's fit for purpose, fit for use. As soon as we have it um, commercially approved by an offtake partner and we have a resource uh, of the material, then this can move ahead quickly. On the nanotechnology side of things, um, this is where the research and development uh, is, is being carried out. So ourselves and Mentor are spending um, over 1 million tons a year on this research because there's, there's such exciting opportunities behind this. This research is focused on the holocyte part of the Kelin. This is the natural nanotubes that we have in the ground. Having natural nanotubes gives us a, a, a huge head start on all sorts of other alternative technologies. Uh, so at the moment, we are looking at a number of projects and progressing those as quickly as possible towards com commercialization. Uh, we have patents filed. Uh, patents have been filed uh, in the area of carbon capture, storage, and conversion to fuel in batteries and supercapacitors and water purification. Um, we're currently working on a second suite of patents, uh, and the other projects were, which will be, will be covered by that are in agriculture, where we've secured 2.4 million tons of government funding for a project there. Um, we also have medical applications we're working on, hydrogen storage and transport, and remediation of soils. So all in all, there's 12 different projects running. Um, the carbon capture one is moving ahead most quickly at the moment because we are rapidly working towards having a pilot plant working to demonstrate that, um, that technology. The good news is that our, our Holocyte Canyon that we have in the Great White Resource is working well in these, pro in these, um, in these new opportunities. Uh, and that's only at 40% of the Holocyte in the Holocyte Canyon. Uh, so it's gonna get better and better as we increase that percentage. Uh, and the box sampling we're doing right now, we're targeting an area of much higher holocyte concentration. Um, and a new area that we're, we're working on in the background is also in cosmetics, because we found that this material uh, is very desirable for cosmetic uh, approvals. Again, the holocyte is highly desirable here. Uh, and that is another huge potential market with a very high value. 
So a bit more detail on the carbon capture plant. This is becoming a very hot topic with the, uh, uh, with the global warming situation and climate change. And we're getting interest from all sorts of parties now in this technology. So what we're doing is we're building a, a plant and you see on the right hand side there, this is a plant we are building. Uh, it, it's been delayed by COVID unfortunately because the uh, main components were coming from India, um, but they are on the way now. And we're looking for um, operations in December of this year. That plant will be able to capture uh, large amounts of carbon dioxide and convert it to a fuel, clean fuel, which very importantly closes the whole loop on carbon dioxide. Uh, and it's based on holoocyte technology. We produce a, a matrix from the holoocyte, which has got very high absorbent capability. Uh, it goes into this plant and this plant will uh, cyclically absorb, release and convert the, the CO2. So our aim is to get this working uh, and show people that uh, we can capture carbon dioxide either from the air or from uh, exhaust gases uh, for less than $20 a ton, which is a very low uh, number for that process. Uh, and if we get that and we succeed in that, then this will be um, very exciting technology. We also have the high purity alumina project. Uh, uh, for those of you who don't know what high purity alumina or HPA is, this is recognized as a key uh, material or mineral for batteries uh, in, in lithium ion battery production. It's, uh, it's forecast to grow in demand dramatically, um, but there was a big shortfall in supply. Now you can make this from Kellin. Um, and importantly for our holoocyte kelin, you can make it um, much more easily and at much higher purity. Um, I'll give you an example of uh, what we mean is normally you'd need 10 tons of kelin to make one ton of HPA at the right purity. Uh, and for work we've done is shown we can probably do it from about three tons of our material. So we've got a big advantage there. We spent three years working on this um, without saying very much. Um, recently we signed up uh, an MOU though with a company that has a plant an operating plant in Canada. Uh, we have now exclusivity to their technology for, a, for Australia and New Zealand. Uh, they're working towards building a new plant in the UK, which has been supported by government funding in the UK. Uh, we're looking to replicate that in Australia. Um, but also we have engaged uh, a truly world-class team of metallurgists in this space. Um, over a hundred years of experience between them. Um, and we're getting a lot of very good, interesting um, advice, and we're working towards some, some very interesting optimizations for this whole process. So what's next for us? Um, next year is gonna be a big, very big year for us, um, but before then, uh, we will phase, we will sell out uh, all of the plant first phase, which is uh, approximately 116,000 tons of product coming out of the plant. Um, as I mentioned before, we could do that right now. We've got people lining up to sign up for that, but we're making sure we choose the right partners uh, and make that as attractive as possible. Um, because also coming up very rapidly now is our definitive feasibility study um, leading to a bankable feasibility study. So those two are well in progress and due for release in the, the last quarter of this year, which is very close now. Um, and on the back of those, so once those are done, um, we will be able to move forward the debt funding situation very quickly. So we're in a very good position now. We don't need to raise any money for a very long time now, if at all. Um, and once the DFS is finished, um, that's the final, um, final hurdle to getting uh, to the banks uh, for, for debt funding talks. We are now in already in negotiations with several banks around the world uh, on debt funding. And once that DFS is done, then um, we will find out how much we can get and uh, to finalize our requirements for the mine. Um, the mining approval, again, that's going through um, the process with the government. Uh, it's, it's going very, very successfully. Uh, we finished the public consultation phase. Uh, we passed that one and it's been published on the government website. So we're just waiting for our mining conditions to come through now. They should be due, uh, they're due to come through next month. So next month we'll get our mining conditions, um, which means then we just have to work out the uh, environmental mining plan with them. Um, and that's just a matter of, of a process that we have to go through. So that's also progressing well. Um, also on the horizon there, we're looking at the high purity uh, holocyte material. This is what's being dug out of the ground at the moment. Um, we have ways of purifying that. We have a, a $1 million pilot plant um, that we can use to process the material to get high purity holocyte. And we believe that we can get some very high levels of percentage there. We already have the highest alloy site found in Australia at the moment uh, and in quite large amounts. So that's a project we're working on. We're pushing the concrete product through to commercialization. 
Um, that's looking very exciting. And at the moment, the results are actually exceeding expectations in there. So that's excellent. We have some additional resources to tack on. Uh, I mentioned we have over 100 million tons already. Um, we have drilled and tested a lot more material in different, uh, different resources. We just have to model those when we get time and we'll add those on. Uh, we look at commercializing nanotechnology as quickly as possible. Uh, and that's probably the carbon capture first, as I mentioned. Also, we've finished our studies into high period alumina and we'll make some more, um, release some more news on that as we move forward. Um, in the background, we have the opportunity for uh, direct shipping um, ore. So there's such a big shortage of this material in the world. Um, and especially in China, that we have four major companies now who want our ore unprocessed. So we just have to work out, um, first of all, if we want to do that, and if we want to do it, how much money we can make from doing that. Uh, and also, we have an opportunity to sell our sand. So when we mine the product, and you see on the right-hand side there, there's a, a diagram uh, of the mine and how it's going to work uh, when it's actually operating next year. So all we do is we take the material out. It's quite a shallow mine. It's more like a quarry. We just take the sand out in a process plant. So we desand it and put the sand back in the hole. Uh, now that sand is actually a very good quality construction sand. So we, we may be able to sell that. And it's another opportunity we're looking at at the moment. So what are the key takeaways for us? Um, first of all, the, uh, we have one of the world's largest resources uh, of this type. Um, it's a very high value industrial mineral, much higher value than ordinary kelin. Um, and it's a low volatility market. This market has been growing year on year very steadily um, for the last 20, 30 years. The good news is that global demand is continuing that way. It's still growing, um, but supply is decreasing. And there's a big gap in the actual market now. The, the biggest mines in the world producing the holoisite kelling uh, have recently shut down. So that's why we are getting approached by numerous parties around the world for this material. We've got a very low, uh, very simple business model, business model sorry, uh, with a low impact mining. You saw it's more like a quarry. Um, and on the back of that, we have huge potential in all these new applications. So some exciting stuff coming through there. Um, and finally, the, the actual capex required is low. As I mentioned before, we have a lot of money right now. We don't need to raise any more money, so that's not a concern. Uh, and we have a short timeline to operation. So thank you for listening to my presentation. There are some more slides that have been released to the SX today. So if you want to see some more information about the JORC, um, uh, our JORC uh, statement, sorry, our JORC uh, tables, they're in there, uh, and also some statements on our um, on the statements I've been making during this presentation. So thanks so thank much, you very much for that, James. Thanks so much. Um, we do have a few questions for you, so we'll get started. Uh, so a few people have asked questions around timing, um, so timing of uh, whether when you're anticipating to break ground in 2022 to start with um, and then around the DFS. So could you please provide some more detail as to when you're anticipating to break ground? Yeah, well, breaking ground first then, that's the first issue. So we, I've said in previous announcements, we're looking to break ground February next year. Um, now the, the rate determining step for that is the government approval process. Um, everything else uh, is relatively straightforward. So we're just waiting for our, as I mentioned before, waiting for our mining conditions to come through, which should come through next month. Um, that means we we will get our mining approval. We, then we just got to work on the environmental closure plan uh, and the mining plan. So that takes a few months. So we're still looking in that time frame. So it's going to be um, we're looking at early next year. Um, now, if the government process goes very smoothly, that's exactly where we'll land. Uh, if it takes a little bit longer, then we'll be um, sort of probably second quarter next year. So it's around about that time. Mm -hmm. uh, in the scheme of things, it's actually very short term now. Uh, the other question about the DFS, yes, that's we were we had a DFS virtually ready to release um, based on the ceramic grade. Um, that was all done and dusted, but because we got this new offtake agreement for the paint grade, we realized that we had a higher value material here, which we could make more money from. We uh, did a bit of a pivot there, uh, and we had to incorporate the paint grade into the DFS. So that's uh, caused a delay, but um, we said that will be released um, fourth quarter this year, and that is still the plan. It's very, very close to being complete now. Um, so I expect that to be out fairly soon. Great, thank you. Um, a question around your HRM product. So there are obviously um, alternative solutions uh, on the market. Wondering here what the comparative benefits of your product are compared to these existing solutions and how well does HRM add to ready mix concrete? So yeah, there are, there are some alternative solutions for rheology uh, modification in concrete. Um, the ones that we've tested against and we in fact come out on top of 
are extremely expensive though. You're talking about um, products here that sell for up to $10,000 a ton. Um, now we can match that performance with our material, um, but those materials, because they're so expensive, um, they are in a niche area uh, and only used when they actually have to be used because they add too much cost to a concrete. So we positioned our HRM to have the same benefits, um, but to be supplied, be able to be supplied at a much lower cost, which means it can be used right across the board in all concrete applications. Uh, and it can add a value to all those applications by when you change the rheology, you can uh, do things like you can add more coarse material uh, and less fine material and less what that means less water and less cement and less chemicals. So there's all sorts of optimizations there you can actually make um, by getting a much more efficient rheology. So we're working on that now and we're having a product. Our aim is to get a product that can be used across the board uh, in all concrete without affecting the cost to the concrete producer too much. Um, but give them lots of benefits. How advanced are your discussions on the commercialization of the concrete product? Um, as someone's asking specifically here if that if that market could take all great white production. So at the moment we haven't we're not incorporating that in our in our, in our DFS. Um, the reason is that we want to there's two things we have to do. We have to get commercial agreements signed up and we have to get a proper resource on that material. Because the HRM material itself um, is a bit different to our normal run of mine material, it's actually our, more like our waste material. Um, because color is not important and some impurities aren't important uh, in the HRM, that material, a lot of it was going on our waste tip. So we're just going back to test um, those areas to find out uh, how much we have so we can get a jork resource on that material. Um, but as soon as we have a jork resource on that material, then um, I'm confident we'll get this uh, agreement signed up very soon because um, there's, there's people chasing pretty hard for that material. Um, and you know, there's a lot of interest now in that sector because anything that can reduce carbon footprints for uh, materials that involve cement uh, are very exciting. So we can certainly do that. And um, it's just a matter of getting that resource done now and we, you know, um, we'll, we'll get something signed up. Jumping over to uh, your ceramics products now, so from concrete to ceramics, how much demand today is... Is there an Asia for the ceramics product? So the demand for that is, is very strong because the haloisite kaolin, which is the unusual uh, material we have, um, the biggest mine in the world was in China and the second biggest was there and they've, they've both closed up, no more production. So there's a, a big demand there, but they've got nothing to process at the moment, nothing to use. Um, so we've got, at the moment we've got um, about 80, 85,000 tons um, of our initial um, production signed up. Um, but we've got people chasing far more than the balance we have left um, who are actually ready to sign up now. Um, as I mentioned before, though, we want to make sure that we have this de-risked um, to the maximum level before we actually go into operation. There's no massive demand now to get more tech signed up right now because we have enough that secures the business. So that's actually enough to get debt finance from the banks if we want. Um, so what we sign up now is just um, a bonus to that. Um, it's quite clear that we got demand from not just China, though. China's the biggest consumer by a long way, but we've got this um, got sign up signed up a contract already in uh, Japan. We've got and we've got a um, uh, big demand from um, indicated from India, um, Taiwan, Thailand um, at the moment, uh, and also other countries in that region. So the Asian demand is very strong. So our plan is to go double capacity after this after year two. Um, so we'll be looking to sign up. Um, double the capacity from year two onwards. And just quickly to wrap up, James, we're jumping back to uh, concrete now as you've piqued a lot of interest there. Is there capacity to sell pure hello sites straight from the Streaky Bay pilot plan to willing customers? Well, the good thing about the um, this uh, HRM product is that we could probably sell that as an ore and it would work well. Um, the only contaminant there is, of course, is sand. And sand uh, is a construction sand, so it would work in those applications. So we could potentially just sell that material straight from the ground for you know, $1,000 a ton plus, which is, would be a fantastic result for us. Um, we, could process, we could process it, though, and just take the sand out. Um, very, very basic process. So put it through a half mil screen would be enough. Um, and that would give us a product that would sell for more. So it's um, the, the, the pilot plant at Streaky Bay is it's a it's a large we have a large centrifuge there which we source from Imris, which is the biggest canyon producer in the world. Um, that will be we only produce 80 90 percent pure purity haloisite in that. Now that's going to be going straight to the carbon capture plant um, for commercialization of that process. 
but we also have, have the opportunity then to sell that pure oil site in its own right. In its own right, it sells for about five thousand dollars a ton. Um, now we don't need there's, there's more than just the oil site for the HRM. Um, without giving too much away, uh, there are other factors involved to make it HRM. It doesn't need to be pure oil site. It needs to be something else. But we know exactly what it does need to be. <clears throat> so we don't need that for the um, we don't need that piece of equipment for the uh, HRM. We can do that very simply. Great, thank you. And I have to ask, because we've had a couple of questions about this, um, is the carbon capture plant in the running for the Elon Musk contest? <laughs> well, let's say it passes all the um, it passes all the uh, uh, criteria for that for that uh, competition. It's not officially entered yet because we wanted to find out due to COVID, it was slowed down the actual <clears throat> manufacture of it. But I can say that once it's in and operating, that could well be one of the things we target. Um, although having said that, we have some very large, interesting companies already uh, who want to get involved in that project as soon as that's operational and we can show them the demo plan they're keen to cool. get involved awesome we might leave it at that for today uh thank you so much for joining us today james thanks for your time thanks everyone